Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to do a little Q&A about the recent clear cards that I shared with you. I have gotten a lot of questions about the material and how it can be used and I thought I would stop by and answer those. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. A few days ago on my channel, I shared how I made these four alternatives using the June 2020 Paper Pumpkin Kit. Up on the screen now, I'm sharing a little video that shows what each of them look like, and you can see that when I use that clear cardstock, I am able to get lots of different layers with just using a card base without adding a lot of bulk, and that is what I like the best about the clear cards. In the past, I have shared lots of clear card videos here on my channel. Making clear cards and shaker cards are some of my favorites. If you want to see any of my past clear card videos, I will have that playlist linked in the description box below. If you want to see the video where I made these, it will also be linked below and I'll have it at the end of this video as a little card and you can just click on it and watch it. When I would get questions before on my clear card stock exactly what it was, I would just answer the person, but I had so much interest and so many questions after this video that I thought I would come and do a little Q&A and try to put all of the information in one spot. If I don't answer a question you have, leave that in the comment section below and I will try to just answer those there so other subscribers or other viewers can check out the comment section to see if their question they had was answered. But I do hope to cover most everything I've gotten asked. I'll start by going over what material I use, showing you how I cut and fold it, and then I will give some more information on other things you can use and answering some of those questions that I got. So let's go ahead and start by talking about the material. Let's start off by getting it out there that what I call clear cardstock is actually just clear report covers. If you would go to your local copy or print shop and have them bind something for you, it is the clear cover they put on the front to protect it. I used to work for Kinko's, now FedEx office, and that is where I first got the idea to use those covers for cards. Now when I order it now, I get the 10 mil, which is the thickest that I have found online. It always has square corners, just so every corner I cut would be square, and I go for the option to have tissue between them. Now the reason that I go for the tissue between them option is because in my mind, and it might not even be the case, I think it protects it from scratches a little bit better and it also makes it easier that when they're all stacked together in their set of 100, it makes it a lot easier to grab. I know in the past that if I've just had them without the tissues, sometimes they get staticky and you just kind of have to bend them and fold them and then they'll come apart. So if yours don't come with tissue that you find and you want to buy, I wouldn't keep that from letting you try it. Like I would say go ahead and get it if tissue is not an option. Now the product and the weight that I usually use, which is the 10 mil with tissue, is unfortunately out of stock. So below I linked what I usually get and you would want to make sure that there was a 10 mil option because right now there are only 5 mil and that will be too thin for cards. But below, I linked a couple 10 mil options that have square corners, but no tissue. Definitely, you could go ahead and try that. Now, I'm hoping eventually what I use does come back in stock. It is the Truebine brand is what I like to use. And here in just a minute, I'm going to share with you some 7 mil I bought from that same company. And honestly, I think the 7 mil would probably work, but I'll show you the difference later on in the video. I know that on Amazon the prices change all the time, but I think the last time that I bought 100 sheets of this, it was $20. So for $20, I could get 200 card bases because all I do is cut this sheet in half and fold it in half, just like if it was a regular piece of cardstock I bought to make a card base out of. 
I've had many of you think that the card bases come to me already cut and folded, but they don't. That is something that I do here on my own because this stuff, it cuts and folds just fine with whatever you would have at home. And again, later I'll show you how that works. Now, if you don't wanna go out and spend $20 to try this out, and I totally understand that, you could always go to your local copy or print shop and see if you could buy a couple of the report covers just to give it a try instead of buying 100. Then if you fall in love, then you could maybe order some more. I'm going to guess that to go and buy these, you're probably looking at a dollar, around a dollar a sheet. Now, one question I had come up a few times was if this was acetate. And I try to look up online about acetate material, and I think that might just be something we call it. I don't think this is actual acetate. Per the brand's website, this is PVC plastic. It's a clear PVC. When I think of acetate, I more think of like the sheets that stamps come in or the plastic that's on packaging. I think that might be a little bit more brittle, but again, I'm not a scientist or a professional packager. That's just my opinion. I also had a couple people ask me, hey, I have transparencies at home. Could I use those? So I got out some transparencies I've had here forever. And so later we will try this to see if it will work. Now mine, unfortunately, I have a white strip here because this is actually made to go through a copier. So there's a white strip for the copier to grab it. And then one corner is square and one corner is rounded. So you, if yours is like this, you would have to kind of work around that in some way. Like I think you could probably only get one card base out of here if you didn't want wonky corners. You would have to like cut it out of the center part. But we will try this later to see how it um, stands up and folds. Now I will say that this transparency material I have, one side of it feels kind of gritty, almost kind of sandy. I don't know if that's because this is made for copiers or what. So you might want to look into what you have to see if it feels better. I've also noticed that I now have some fingerprints all over this transparency since I have held it. The clear cardstock is fingerprint resistant. It's not fingerprint proof, but it definitely doesn't get fingerprinted like this has. So I did mention earlier that I have also bought before the seven mil with tissue covers. And this is what it comes like if you buy the normal brand I get with the tissues. There, there is usually a piece of white cardstock on the top and bottom to hold these in a nice stack. And you'll see here, sometimes the tissue pokes out, but that's no big deal. Now I'm gonna start doing some of the hands-on stuff. The first thing I'm gonna show you is how I make my card bases. When I am ready, I do go ahead and remove the tissue before I cut it. And yes, compared to the transparency, this is just smooth as butter. With my sheets, sometimes I will cut them at four and a quarter, so I have a top fold card base. Other times I will cut them at five and a half. How you cut it is up to you. You just cut it in half. And then you have your two pieces for your card bases. I do always cut forward and backward on my rotary trimmer, but you probably don't have to do it twice. I will show you later too on one of just like the teeny tiny blade cutters, like a Stampin' Up trimmer, um, so you can see what that looks like as well because it does work. So once I have it cut, I then always fold mine by hand. It does take a little pressure there and sometimes I'll bring in a bone folder just to make the fold nice and tight. One subscriber asked if a bone folder would make a mark, and I don't see any on here. If you were worried about that, you would just wanna make sure you try to just keep it on the edge, but you'll see that once it's cut and folded, it stands up nicely on its own. It's nice and solid. That is why I go with the 10 mil. I'm gonna set the other piece of cardstock to the side so later we can do a little bit of scoring testing with this because if the folding might be too hard for your fingers I wanted to show you that you can score it and it works that way as well next up I wanted to try the 7 mil cover just in case you can't find the 10 mil or you want to go a little thinner 
Once again, I will cut it at five and a half. I will use my trimmer to fold it. Now, if you don't want to use a bone folder, you could fold it with your fingers and then I just run my fingernails right on there to make it a nice tight fold. It does stand up on its own as you'll see, but it is a little bit more wobbly than the 10 mil. Unless you think your recipient is going to put these on display for months, I think the 7 mil would work. For my sample today, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it with the white strip on it. If you want to try a transparency and you want to cut it out of the middle, if you have something like I do with wonky corners and the white strip, you can do that. But for today, I'm just going to cut it at five and a half. And it cut just fine. And then I'm going to fold it. It does stand up on its own pretty nicely. I have noticed that I have even more fingerprints on here, so if that is something that would bother you, keep that in mind. But I would say overall, if you have transparencies in your stash, give it a try. It just might not be a card, like sometimes I'll just put teeny tiny cards in the center. If you did something like that, it might not stand up. It might be too heavy, but if you're gonna fill most of it with pattern paper or cardstock, I think a transparency would be a great way to try it out. Next up, I wanna show you that regular cutters can cut this material. You don't have to have a rotary trimmer like I do. I just like those because I think the blades always last a lot longer. So I got out an old Creative Memories trimmer that I have. I thought the blade was probably the most like the Fiskars or the Stampin' Up trimmer. Later I will show you a We Are Memory Keepers um, trim and scoreboard. The blade on that looks a lot littler than what I think the other ones have. So I thought I would try this first to show you how you can cut it probably with whatever trimmer you have. This is the 10 mil material, and I'm just going to cut off one of the edges so I can use this when I show you on the other trimmer. So I'm just going to line it up so I can, I'll be cutting right there. And that was very easy. I hardly had to push any more than with a regular pattern piece of paper, and you'll see there I have a nice cut. Now I'm going to bring in my We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard. If you look at the little blade on this, which you probably can't see it on camera, it barely sticks out of there. I think that normal, like a Fiskars trimmer or the Stampin' Up trimmer, I think the blades stick out more. So that's why I wanted to try it on that other one first. But I am going to go ahead and try it on here in case you have something like this. And we will just cut one end off of it. I think I had to push a little bit harder on this, but not bad. And then I have two pieces here. While I have this board out, I thought I would show you about scoring it. I had a couple people ask me that if I scored these first before I folded it, and really I don't, but I wanted to show that it does work. I was a little bit worried about the slickness of this material, if it would score or not. So I tried it off camera, and I have to say I think it's okay. I'm going to score at the two inch mark, and I just make sure that I go, you know, kind of slow, just so I don't slip out of that track. And it did put a little indentation in there. It's not like an indent you would have with cardstock, but I think it could definitely get you started. Now, normally when you score something, you would score it the opposite way, or you would fold it, sorry, the opposite way of the side you scored on. And so you'll see there, it makes a nice fold. Let's try that again and fold it with the score indentation. So instead of going this way, I'm going to fold it up. And again, I'm just going to reinforce that with my fingernails, but you could always do it with a bone folder. And the folds are pretty comparable how close they stay together. The last thing I wanted to do before I go and just look through some of the questions you've sent that I haven't answered is show you the difference between the clear cardstock or the report covers and using a transparency. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to tell on screen, 
but the transparency does give a more matte look to what is inside of it and I think it's a little bit cloudy but it's not cloudy enough to turn me off from trying it. And now is the final Q&A session. I have just a few questions or comments that I want to talk about on camera. Most of the questions I have already covered. But before I get to that, I want to let you know that if you're interested in winning some card blanks to try out for yourself, to make sure to keep watching this video. Before I do get to those questions, make sure that if you have any more, that you leave those in the comment section below. Now the first comment I want to share with you, it actually wasn't a question, but thank you to Joe Picker who wrote, I love the look of the clear cards, can't find the 10 mil. Because Joe left this comment, I was able to go find those alternatives for you so I could link those up because the link that I did leave for the 10 mil with tissue, it defaulted to 5 mil with tissue since the 10 mil was out of stock. I wouldn't have known that without that comment. So thank you so much. Again, I do have the products linked in the description box below if you wanna try them out. Speaking of the items linked below, that was the biggest question or the most frequently asked question that I got. Like Bette Moreau says, I love what you did with these cards. Where do we get the clear card bases? I hope that I have answered that now for you and let you know that it's not really just the card base that I do cut and fold that material to make it into that card base. And finally, from Diane Baldwin, she wrote, great cards. Does the adhesive show on the back of the card through the clear card? That is a great question, Diane. I used to get that a lot when I was making clear cards, and I think you might be the only one who asked it this time, but yes. The way that I make clear cards, the adhesive does show on the back. Let me show you. So here would be the back of this card. You can see adhesive. Also on the inside of the back, you can see it on the back of the black cardstock. Now, if something like that does bother you, if you did a card like this, you could adhere the striped gold paper piece to the front of the card, to the outside front, and then that black mat, you could have adhered to the back of the front cover, and that would have covered the adhesive. And then you could have maybe made another mat for the back. But for me, I don't let that get to me, I guess. I'm hoping that the people I send these cards to you know, aren't judging me because you can see adhesive back there. I don't think it's a huge turn off. I realize the material is clear. You're going to see some of that stuff from the front, but you could always cover it up with patterned paper or other items if you wanted to. So that concludes the question and answer portion of this video. I want to say a big thank you to everybody who left a question. I know that I only showed a few of you on screen, but a lot of you, I put your questions together for that first portion of the video for the main chunk of it. And I totally appreciate your input and your questions. Now, if you're interested in trying out a clear card base for yourself, I am going to pick five subscribers that I will mail one clear card base to so you can give it a try. For today's giveaway, you can be an international subscriber. You do need to be 18 years or older and of course subscribe to my channel. To be entered to win, there are three things you need to do. First, give this video a thumbs up. Second, I want you to leave a comment below and tell me your favorite type of card to make. It could be an occasion like thinking of you, you know, birthday, or it could be a type of card like a shaker or a slimline. Anything that is your favorite to make and then make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag clear cards. You will need to have both of those things in your comments so I know that you are qualified and that you're interested in being entered into the giveaway. If you have any questions, as always, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.